Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to a new video series called Parallel C++. So in this series, we're going to be learning about some of the core concepts of parallel programming and expanding off of some of the basic ideas that we learned about in our previous series, C++ from scratch. Now, in this first video of the series, we're going to be learning about um, one of the most important topics in parallel programming, and that's going to be work distribution. So one of the most dis important decisions that we have to make whenever we're writing a parallel application is deciding on how our work is going to be distributed between our different threads or processes. Now at a high level, there's two major ways we can do this. We can either do this statically or we can do this dynamically. And there's pros and cons to each of these approaches and which one works best depends on the specifics of the scenario. Now, starting out, we have uh, static distribution or partitioning. So with static distribution or partitioning, we basically decide ahead of time um, how we're going to distribute our work between our you know, different threads or processes, and that strategy is going to be fixed, right? We're not going to make adjustments to that at runtime. So an example of this would be if we just decided to equally divide up all of our work across the different threads that we were going to spawn. Now, the pros of this approach is that it can be very simple to implement, and there's little to no you know, work that we need to do at runtime, right, to maintain the strategy, right? It's often very simple. Now, the cons of this approach is that it can do a, a fairly poor job if we have um, work or jobs that come in different sizes that we can't predict ahead of time, right? So if we have some runtime data that we're processing or runtime or these jobs that have different durations. Now, the reason for this is because with a static strategy, we could wind up with an example where one thread, say, gets all the long running work and is overloaded. Um, and another thread gets all the short running work and is being underutilized and maybe even just sitting idle, right? So that's some of the cons or problems that we can run into with uh, our static distribution. Now, on the other side of things, we have dynamic distribution, and this is where we can implement things like load balancing and work stealing. So we can pre prevent these, you know, over uh, subscribe threads and um, idle thread problems by simply balancing the workout. So we can have a, a balancing system where say an idle thread will still work away from a, uh, an oversubscribed thread. That way, you know, all of our different say threads or resources are contributing, um, you know, to this, you know, global pool of work that we're trying to process. Now the cons of dynamic distribution is that all of this kind of load balancing um, has an additional computational cost and runtime cost, right? There's no such thing as a free lunch. So if we're doing things like load balancing and work stealing, we're spending compute resources specifically for the distribution strategy, not just on you know doing the assigned work. So what we're going to be looking at today is you know some examples of static distribution versus this more dynamic distribution and load balancing in two different scenarios here. So one case where we have you know roughly even job length, so we have a, a big pool of work that we want to process in parallel, and all the jobs take around the same time. And then another case where we have a pool of jobs we want to process, but the work comes in different sizes. So let's go ahead and start off with you know this even job length example here. And we'll have one static distribution technique and a dynamic distribution technique here. And we'll be using uh, thread building blocks for these examples. So let's go ahead and go to open up this uh, static.cpp here. So as a proxy for work, we're going to be um, just sleeping a thread for some set amount of time, right? That's going to be a proxy for you know, work that takes some duration. So in this case here, we're going to create a random number generator and generate random numbers between 20 and 30. And we're going to have two to the 18 total work items that we're going to process. So here we just create all those work items, which will just be these random numbers between 20 and 30. So two to the 18 total work items in this vector. And then we're going to process all of these items in parallel using this uh, TBB, so Intel's thread building blocks library. Uh, we're going to process these in parallel using this parallel for loop here. And for our actual work at the core of this loop, we're just going to sleep our thread for some amount of microseconds here. So somewhere between 20 and 30 microseconds. So in this first example, we're going to be using the TBB static partitioner here. So if we take a look on the right hand side of the page, we see a summary of these different partitioners that we can use. 
And at the bottom here, we have our static partitioner. And it talks about this deterministic chunk size, cache affinity, and uniform distribution of iterations. But really the key part that we're looking at here is the fact that it does, it, it does all of this without load balancing here. So in this case, it's going to chunk up our work, but it's not going to make sure that it's balanced in any way uh, between these different chunks. Okay, so the other example that we have here is with our dynamic distribution here. So we're still going to be using the, you know, the same case here where we have two to the 18 work items of these random numbers between 20 and 30. So all of our jobs are roughly the same length. You know, they're, they're only, you know, at most 10 microseconds apart. And then uh, in this case, we're going to be using the auto partitioner. So we're using this parallel four, but we're not specifying a partitioner. So we'll end up using this auto partitioner. And this auto partitioner uh, does dynamic distribution of work. So it will include things like load balancing. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile these two examples and see the performance difference between the two, right? It's always important to keep in mind that whenever we're writing uh, these parallel programs, uh, we're doing so for performance, right? Parallel programming is inherently performance programming. Um, if we didn't care about performance, we would just write a much more simple serial application. So let's go ahead and compile these two programs here. So we can compile first our static uh, .cpp, and we'll compile it with O3 optimizations and linking against lib thread building blocks. That's the library where we get these partitioners and this uh, parallel for loop. And then we can also uh, compile dynamic.cpp with the exact same um, optimization options. So let's go ahead and time these two uh, uh, executables here. So first we'll run static and we'll see how long it takes to process those two to the 18 items. And we see it takes somewhere on the order of 2.46, 2.45 um, total seconds here, right? We run it a couple times and we get fairly consistent results here. And let's see how long it takes to run, you know, the dynamic example, right? So that's the one where we're using the auto partitioner that includes load balancing. And what we see is that between static and dynamic, really there's not much of a difference between the two. So we're seeing somewhere between 2.45, 2.454, you know, 2.449, um, know, right? There's really not much of a difference between these dynamic cases and these static cases. At most, it's on the order of about 0.01 seconds here. So we're really not getting any extra benefit by doing something like load balancing in this case. Um, it's about the same whether or not we use static or dynamic partitioning. Right. And this should make some intuitive sense here. If all of our work takes around the same amount of time, right, um, we're never going to run into these situations where one thread is overworked and one thread is just kind of, say, sitting idle and is underworked. Everything's going to be finishing up at around the same time because all of the work it has around the same duration here. Okay. So, so that's a simple example here where our job lengths are even. So there's really not much of a difference between static and dynamic partitioning or work distribution in this case, um, at least using thread building blocks. Okay, so let's go to our next example here where we have uneven job lengths. And our example is pretty much the same except with how we're generating our random numbers. So instead of just generating one pool of random numbers, say between 20 and 30, now we have four different bins to select from. So in bin one, we have some very short running work. So our random numbers are between one and 25. Then in bin two, it's 26 and 50, then 51 and 75, and then 76 and 100, right? So we have four different bins that we're going to be generating work from that all take different amounts of time. So our a quarter of our work is going to come from this first bin, a quarter from the second bin, a quarter from this third bin, and a quarter from this fourth bin here. And we're still going to have two to the 18 total work items here. But again, now it's coming, a quarter of the work is coming from each of the bins now. So we just generate all of these work items here and put them into our work items vector. And then in the static case, it's the exact same TBB parallel for loop. And we're going to be using our static partitioner here, again, without any load balancing. Then we can go ahead and open up our dynamic work distribution example. You can see it's the exact same scenario, so the exact same distributions, um, the exact same number of work items here. The only difference is that instead of specifying the static partitioner down here, we're just going to be using the auto partitioner, right, for this TBB parallel for loop that is going to include load balancing. So let's go ahead and quit out of here and let's uh, generate our executables. 
So we'll generate this dynamic.cpp executable and also our static.cpp executable. Again, with O3 optimizations and linking against lib thread building block. So let's see the difference in performance um, in this case where we have, uh, have uneven job lengths. So let's time first um, static, right? This is a case where we're using the static partitioner to divide up our work. So it takes somewhere on the order of around four and a half uh, total seconds here. Um, so, and we run it a couple times, we can see that it's fairly consistent. So 4.518, 4.513, 4.517. So really only varying around, you know, 0 0.00, you know, four five uh, uh, seconds total. Now let's see how long it takes to run um, with our dynamic distribution here. So where we do have load balancing. So we, we can go ahead and run this and we can see that it's actually a whole heck of a lot faster here um, for the exact same problem that we're trying to solve here. So instead of taking somewhere on the order of four and a half seconds for a static distribution, for the same amount of work, it's now taking you know 3.2 seconds total. And the only difference is we're using the auto partitioner instead of the static partitioner. And again, this should make some intuitive sense based on the problem that we're trying to solve. So now we have these different job lengths, right? Uh, coming from these four different bins and our, uh, the bins themselves have a slightly uh, wider range of, of work. So now it's much more likely that we run into a scenario where you know one thread is overworked and another thread is underworked. So that's a scenario where we would want things like load balancing, where we don't know how you know much work each thread is going to get ahead of time. So we want to be able to make these adjustments to make sure that every thread is contributing to solving the problem at hand, right? And in this case, it's saving us about you know 1.3 seconds by just making sure that we're selecting the right partitioner here. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this first video. It's a brief introduction to um, this work distribution and this work partitioning idea, one of the most important topics in parallel programming, and one of the largest sources of you know performance we can get is making sure we're selecting the right strategy for how we're dividing our work between our different threads. Now below the video, I'll make sure to include a link to this partitioner sum summary for uh, lib thread building blocks. And of course, you can find this or any of my other um, you know, coding examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and hope you have a nice day.